Hey guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to play Gone Away by The Offspring. For the basics of this song, you'll just need your guitar and standard tuning. Now if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve any guitar in general, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Now all the tones that you hear in this lesson are recorded using the Boss Katana 100 Mark II. I'll leave a link to the tone patch in the description below if you want to check that out. All right, let's jump into the lesson. Okay, so I'm going to start by teaching you all of Dexter's guitar parts. So he's the lead singer, and then I'll teach you all of Noodle's guitar parts after that. Let's start with the intro, which is really nice and easy. There's just one line of tab here, and we're just going to play some power chords. So we're going to start with an F power chord up here. So index finger on the eighth fret of the fifth string, ring and pinky on the 10th frets of the fourth and third string. Now with your index finger, as you're hitting that eighth fret, you also want to lightly touch all the other strings below it. Now I don't mean bar and push down those strings, I mean just lightly have contact with them so that if you strum all the strings, these strings are going to be muted and just the notes that you fret are going to be the ones that ring out and that's what we want. You also want the sixth string not to ring out as well. So to do that, you can lightly touch it with the index finger as you're fretting down the fifth string. Or you can use your free middle finger here to lightly touch the sixth string. It's completely up to you. So we're gonna be just strumming this F power chord at eighth notes for one full bar. So one, two, three, four. Now in terms of guitar tone, I'm just using a high gain amp channel with the gain turned up and I've added a little bit of reverb. Now you could achieve a similar result if you had a clean amp channel and you just added a distortion pedal in front of it. For the second bar, we'll take this power chord shape and we'll shift it down to fourth and sixth frets and we'll also move it up one string. So we're gonna use the sixth, fifth and fourth strings here. So this is an A flat five shape because the root note is an A flat. We're gonna strum this for one bar. And then we'll go to an E flat five. So move this power chord shape down one string and then up two frets. So our root note is an E flat. And then the final bar is a B flat five. So we just move this shape up one string. So the root note is a B flat. And we're gonna repeat that line of tab through twice for the intro, but I'm just gonna play it through once now. So the intro will sound like this, and this will be also used in the choruses. So that's played through twice for the intro. Next we get to the verse where Dexter plays a really cool guitar lead line. Now I'm gonna switch my tones here. I'm gonna add a phaser pedal to this to get that cool sound you hear in the recording. If you don't have a phaser pedal, you could try using a chorus or even a flanger pedal if you want. So for this riff, we're gonna start in the third fret of the third string. We're gonna pluck that and then go up to the fifth fret, down to the third fret of the fourth string. And then with our ring finger, hit the fourth fret of the second string and slide up to the sixth. So there's four plucks there. And it's all at eighth notes. So one and two and three and four and. For the second bar, we're gonna start with an open third string, and then first fret with your middle finger, then first fret of your fourth string with your index, and then we're gonna pluck the second fret of the second string with our ring finger and slide that up to the fourth. So again, four plucks. For the third bar, we're gonna to go to the third fret of the fourth string, pluck that, and then go up to the fifth, down to the first fret, all on the same string. And then we're gonna hit the second fret of the second string and then slide up to the fourth again. So the first four plucks of this third bar. And then we're gonna go up to the sixth fret. And that's on the four beat. So one, two, and three, and four, and For the fourth bar, we go to the third fret of the third string. We're gonna pluck this twice. Then we'll hit the fifth fret of the third string. And as it's ending, slide out and we'll use our middle finger to end the riff on the third fret of the fourth string. Last two bars. And the riff in total. Okay, 
After that riff ends, there's just the drum and bass for the verse. Next we get to chorus one, which is just the same as the intro, except we play it through four times. So it's just those power chords and we're going back to our original tone. <laughs> For the second verse, we'll start with a low F power chord. So it's basically an F bar chord, but then we're just taking the top three strings. And we're just going to strum that and let it ring out for the rest of verse two. Then we get to the pre-chorus, which is my favorite riff of the song. So there's two lines of tab here. We're going to start with this position here. So index on the fifth fret of the third, middle finger on the sixth fret of the second and pinky finger on the eighth fret of the first string. We're gonna pluck each of those strings at eighth notes. Now it's important to note that this doesn't start on the one beat, it starts on the end beat after the one. So it goes one, and two, and three, four. And then for our second shape, we're going to rearrange our fingers. So pinky finger will slide down to the sixth fret of the first string, middle finger on the fifth fret of the third, and index on the fourth fret of the second string. We're gonna pluck the exact same string, so third, second, first, and let it ring out. The second bar has the same timing as the first bar, so again, we don't start until the end beat after the one, so one, and two, and three. Then for the third bar, we're going to keep our pinky finger where it is, rearrange our index and middle finger to the third and fourth frets. So it's the same as our first position, but just down two frets. We'll pluck the exact same strings. The timing is the same as the other two bars, so we start plucking this on the end beat after one. One, two, and three, and four. And then for our final riff, we'll have our index finger on the first fret of the first string, and our middle and ring finger will be on the third frets of the fourth and third. We're gonna pluck the first, then fourth, and third string. Pluck the third fret of the first string and slide up to fourth. And the first four plucks. We go back down to the third fret with our index. And then with our middle finger, hit the fourth fret of the second string and slide up to the sixth. So the riff in total. And the first line of the tab. One. The second line of tab is almost the same, so the first three bars are identical, but then for the fourth bar, instead of doing that last riff, we're gonna go to our B flat power chord, and we're just going to palm mute this, so use the flashy bit of your palm to lightly rest on the edge of the bridge, and you'll get that chug sound, and we're gonna just strum this at eighth notes as we build up to the chorus. So you can slightly start releasing the palm contact as you progress through the bar. So one, two, like that. And the pre-chorus in total, one, two, three, four, one, two, Next we get to the second chorus, which is just the same as the first chorus. Next we get to the break. Now the first line of tab is nothing, there's just silence. And then we're gonna kick in with that riff that we had in verse one, but we're just gonna play the first three bars of it, so. And then we'll switch back to our normal tone. And then after that we'll go to our B flat, five power chord and we'll just build this up for two full bars. So just strumming down at eighth notes. We'll start palm muted and then we'll slowly open up. So one. And that's it for the break. 
Now the bridge is just the same chords as the chorus, just repeated through twice, so nothing new to learn there. Then there's another pre-chorus, so we've already learnt that. And then we have chorus three. So for chorus three, that first line of chords is just the same progression as the intro and other choruses. We've already learnt that. The second line of tab, we stay on this B flat five for a full bar. And then we end with an so if you want to see all of that in context, then skip to the end of this lesson where there's the full playthrough. But now let's jump into all of Noodle's guitar parts. Let's start with the intro and there's two lines of tab here. So for the first line of tab, it's basically what Dexter plays as well. So it's the same power chords, the so F5, L, E flat 5, E flat 5, and E flat 5, all at eighth notes. So that's pretty easy. We play that through once and then for the second line of tab, we start playing some lead. So for our first position, we're going to have our index finger on the sixth fret of the second string and pinky finger on the eighth fret of the first string. So we're just gonna focus on those two strings. Now, one way to mute all the other strings as you're strumming these ones is to lightly touch them with your free middle and ring fingers, all right? So if you just make contact with the other strings, they won't ring out even if you're strumming all the strings only the second and first will ring out. So that's one little tip, or you can just focus on hitting those two strings as well if you want, completely up to you. But, but it's good practice to be able to mute other strings, just in case, so when you're rocking out, you don't have to worry about being so precise. So that's the first position at eighth notes, one and two and three and four. And then for our next position, slide our index finger up to the eighth fret and bar it across those two strings and our middle finger will come to the ninth fret of the second string. We're gonna play this at eighth notes for the full bar. Then for the third bar, we'll shift down to the fourth and sixth frets. So it's the same as our first shape, but just down two frets. And for the final bar, we're gonna just shift out your next finger and bar it across the sixth frets for a full bar. That's it for the intro, which sounds like this. As we move into the first verse, we're just going to hit low F power chord and let that ring out as Dexter plays his lead guitar part. Then we move on to chorus one, which is the same as the intro, except the first line of tab is played through twice and the second line of tab is played through twice as well. Verse two is the same as verse one, and then we get to the pre-chorus. Now the pre-chorus is identical to Dexter's pre-chorus. So just rewind back to Dexter's pre-chorus if you wanna learn that step by step. Chorus two is the same as chorus one, and then we get to the break. So for the break, Noodles turns on a clean amp channel and he's strumming some bar chords here. So we're gonna start with an F major bar chord, which is interesting because this song is in F minor, but it gives this really interesting sound for this first chord. So we're gonna strum that, hold out for the full bar, and then we'll go up to our A flat bar chord. So it's the same shape, just up at fourth and sixth frets. And then we'll play at E flat bar chords. So your next finger on the sixth fret of the fifth string, and you can use your ring finger to bar across the eighth frets of the fourth and second string. Or you can use your middle ring and pinky finger as well if you want. But I prefer just using that ring finger to bar. So we strum that once, and then we're actually going to end this bar with a up, down. Finally, we end with the B flat bar chord with the same strumming pattern, so. So that's the first line of tab. For the second line of tab, we go to our F and we're strumming this with a D. And then same with the A flat. Same with the E flat. And then we shift to a distortion tone and we're just going to palm mute this B flat power chord for two bars. One, two, and three. So start by palm muting and then slowly open up. 
that is it for the break, which sounds like this. The bridge is just the same as the second line of tab of the chorus, so nothing new to learn there. After the bridge, there's another pre-chorus, and then we get to chorus number three. So for chorus number three, it's the same as the other choruses, except we have a third line of tab here. And also the second line of tab is played through three times, not twice. For the extra line of tab, we're just staying in this sixth fret position barred for a full bar. And then we're so those are all of Noodle's guitar parts. Again, if you want to see all of his parts in context, skip to the playthrough at the end of this lesson. And those are all the guitar parts for this awesome song. So now I'll be doing a full playthrough of the song and I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. Feel free to play these back as many times as you'd like to to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you wanna grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzerotohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.